Hello friends, this is Becky Edwards of Purpose Driven Motherhood. <clears throat> I want to share five amazing lessons I learned from a really amazing, incredible painting experience I had over this weekend. Um, I hosted a retreat called Powered with Purpose uh, for women. We had about 30, 30 women there, it was amazing. And Kendra Burton, who is a beautiful, talented artist, is the painter of this gorgeous Christ painting right here. And she, we had her come and talk about her life experiences and things she had learned. And she's a temple mural painter. I mean, she's just so mega talented. And then she walked us through our own group experience of painting this gorgeous sunset. Okay, I hope you can see that full, that full painting. I loved this experience. Even, I think even more than I thought I would. And I knew I was going to love it. The first lesson I learned is that Every person is needed. That you know, Paul taught the Corinthians that um, we're, we're we're all one body in Christ. That the eye can't say to the nose, can't say to the foot, can't say to the mouth. Well, you're not as important as me, so you're you aren't needed. That's not how it works. And yet, sometimes we compare ourselves to others and think, well, they're more qualified, they're more amazing, they're more this, they're more that, and we do this comparison game. And so we want to take a step back and not do our own part to build God's kingdom or whatever he has asked us to do. But what if I had said, well, I'm not as amazing as so-and-so. What if, Okay, what if I had said, I'm not as good of an artist as Kendra Burton. Then I'm going to step away and not do my part. I want to show you what my part was. See how there's a sun right here. It's a, little, a beautiful little sunset. And here's some white streaks coming on the water. My part was the yellow streaks coming off those white. That was my part. Well, what if that was left blank? That would look weird. That would not look right. So each person is needed. What if, what if somebody who was doing the blue over here in the water said, no, I'm just, I don't, I'm not good enough. I, I have too many fears. I, you know, all these different things that we, that um, these different negative thoughts that we have about ourselves that make us want to hide and step back from doing our part to build, build God's kingdom and fulfill our missions, then there would be a blank spot right there instead of blue. That would be so sad. That was the first lesson, is each part is needed. Each of us is needed in the kingdom. The second lesson, and I think this one was my biggest take home, one of my biggest take home messages from the entire retreat, and that is Kendra taught us that every painting has an awkward face, and you know what? That is true. I don't paint anymore much, but I used to paint growing up, and my favorite was watercolor. I, I won awards. I've done some, uh, you know, I did AP art in high school, and I just went watercolor as many times as I could. That was my choice. And there's always an awkward stage where you think, uh, I don't think this is going to work out. It doesn't look that great. And we saw that with this painting. It did not look that good in the process, in the process. And when, um, when the retreat was just about over, I invited each person to get a piece of cardstock and we brainstormed all the, the gold nuggets that we had learned from all the different presenters and all the experiences and all the activities that we had done and you know the things that the Spirit had taught them. And I had each of them choose like one statement that could be kind of their mantra that they take home. And, and they sat next to this painting with their statement and my statement uh, I know Facebook Live makes it backwards. I'll read it to you. I trust the master painter's plan. I trust it. I trust that even in the awkward stage, the master painter has a final vision of what my life will look like, what my child's life will look like, what my mission will look like, what the retreat will look like. Everything we go through, if we're progressing forward, we have awkward phases, right? And we, we, we kind of, some of us remember that awkward phase when we were 13 and had braces and, you know, our hair was funky or whatever. <laughs> we move through that awkward phase and we become amazing, beautiful people. And the third lesson I learned, it actually kind of made me sad for a minute. This, this is what happened. So Kendra gave each person some instructions while the other people were either visiting or watching or whatever. And my part, like I said, was the, were the, the, um, the reflection, the yellow reflections right here in these two rows. And she showed me what to do and how far to make them go out. So I did those reflections and I looked at our pattern that we were copying and I noticed that there was blending both 
both within the white and out to the sides, but she didn't tell me to blend. She just told me to make those two, you know, little uh, stripes on the side, um, back and forth. And so I said, okay. And I was, I was maybe expecting some more instructions. Well, I didn't tell her that I am an artist. And so she just took the brush for me and she's beautiful and adorable and amazing. So she didn't have any bad attentions, but she's an amazing master artist. So she took the brush and she goes, I'm just gonna blend this just a little bit. And she starts to blend the yellow into the middle and the white and blend it out to the sides. And I didn't say anything, but I kind of felt sad <laughs> that I didn't get that chance to blend. And then it was later that that thought came, that I, that little memory came back to me. And, I, and the spirit taught me, just as Kendra is a master artist, this analogy is beautiful for my life with the master, the master. That there are some things that I say, I can do it myself. I want to do it myself. But oh my goodness, hand the paintbrush over once in a while and say, make it better than I can. In fact, hand the paintbrush over all the time, all the time. Turn things over to him and get to work. But know that the enabling, uh, strengthening power of the atonement, which is called grace, according to Elder Bednar's gorgeous talk on this, that makes our efforts stronger, better, more beautiful, bigger capacity. The grace of, of Christ's atonement brings the power and beauty and talent of the master into our lives, into our beautiful masterpieces. The master can make our us into a masterpiece. That was such a beautiful lesson for me. And again, I trust the master painter's plan. He sees the final vision that I can't see. I don't see it because I have a veil over my memory. So another cool lesson is opposition. So when you have dark and light, if we didn't have any darkness in this paint, in this painting, the light of that gorgeous sunset and the beautiful sun and the reflection on the water would not be so bright. It wouldn't feel as bright. It could be the exact same colors of paint, but it wouldn't feel as bright. So the opposition in our lives, the darkness and the hard times make the good times even better. It's part of the beauty of it. Same thing with complementary colors that when you put, so, um, okay, two complementary colors would be like orange and purple. There's a little bit of purple here. And when you put two complementary colors by each other, they pop, they look even better. Again, opposition in our lives, adversity, the adversary, these different trials and challenges that come to us. If we didn't have those, we wouldn't appreciate the beauty and it wouldn't be as beautiful. The last lesson that I learned, and I probably learned more, but these were the five that came to mind today. The last lesson I learned is this painting took longer than I expected, but I have not been an oil painter. That's not my thing. I'm a watercolor person and I've never, I also didn't know how long, uh, I've never, I didn't know how it would work to have 30 different people work on one painting and one master artist directing that. But you know what? Even though it took longer than expected, the, the, uh, the journey, the experience, the path of that was even more joyful than I expected. It was more joyful. It was more, and the final result was even more beautiful than I expected. And that reminds me of, of the C.S. Lewis story that I just adore that um, he talks about. Sometimes we invite the Savior in to remodel our little cottage and we say, oh, there's a leak in the roof and there's a, there's a faucet that needs repair and there's just a couple little things. Will you please fix those for me? And the Savior comes in and he starts to work and then he starts tearing down the roof and he starts pushing out the walls and, and we say, yikes, that's not what I asked for. No, thank you. I just needed a little bit of repair. Please don't do that. And the Savior, the Master, Remodeler, the master carpenter, the master artist, the master. He says to us, you just wanted repairs on your little cottage, but I see a bigger vision for you. I am remaking you into a palace. <sighs> wow. And, and Neil Maxwell loved to say when he told this quote the very first time I heard it, it was a beautiful time to hear it because I was depressed. I had a, it's a really hard time for me in my life. I was a brand new mother and having some hard issues. And 
I listened to Neil Maxwell, the Marriott Center at BYU, the devotional, tell this, this um, story. I'd never heard it before. And it just made me fall in love with C.S. Lewis. And uh, Neil Maxwell said, and just like other remodeling projects, don't they typically take longer than we expect? Don't they typically cost more than we expect? Don't they typically make more of a mess than we expect? But look at the results. The results are worth any price, any length of time, any mess, any awkward phases, right? They're worth any of that. So I, I want to express my deep, heartfelt gratitude to my beautiful, adorable friend, Kendra Burton, who is the artist of these gorgeous paintings. And now I get to keep the sunset painting in my home. I'm so, I'm, I'm looking around my home deciding, where will I put this? I'm so excited because to me, it, it almost makes me cry every time I look at it. It was such a sacred experience being at the retreat, all the experiences we had together, the spirit, the sisterhood, the, 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 um, the unity, the connection, the, the, it was an electric feeling. It was incredible. And then this specific activity on top of that was so sacred, so filled with symbolism to me and so joyful. Even those who didn't dare paint at the beginning, they're like, I don't know, I'm scared. I don't really know what to do. But the master painter was right there. The master painter, as long as you can listen to instructions, gives instructions. It's not another lesson. So that's lesson number six. Stay close to the master painter and ask questions and he'll give you instructions. He'll give you some specific helps when you need them. And she did for me. So I thank Kendra and I thank you for the opportunity to, to share this with you. This was, this was cool. And I invite you that when you have a messy, awkward phase in your life, to re, to look at it differently, to know that this would not be a beautiful, gorgeous portrait of Christ, and this would not be a beautiful painting of a sunrise without those awkward phases that look kind of messy and kind of ugly. And that is the plan. But God has a master plan. He knows the vision. He knows the beginning from the end. He is in charge. And I invite you to listen to the master artist. Have a fabulous Sabbath.